Hey guys, uh, I forgot to do a quick update. Um, I got a little bit more done on the bike. I decided to reuse this back end. There's a bunch of real estate here that wasn't being used. So this was the, I believe it was the back gate or the front gate for the, the, tr the trailer. It's all steel. Uh, anything from there down is steel. But uh, I had someone ask how heavy the bike is. Well, right as, as it stands right now, the way it is right now, you can lift it with one hand. It's pretty actually pretty light because the whole front's aluminum. It's just the back. You want the back to be somewhat steel because you don't want bending and cracking and everything else. This is take some weight. Um, my last bike, uh, I I transported logs. I transported a uh, huge air conditioner. I mean, you'd be surprised how much weight this bike can actually hold. This, uh, th that's why I stuck with the same design because it, it works. Um, this here I built for pretty much whatever you want to use it for. Um, my battery just fits perfect on that. It might hit the back of this. I'm not too sure yet, but I'm going to use a ratcheting uh, strap to pretty much mount whatever I want on there without it moving. Um, the black plastic that was on the bottom of the tra trailer, I probably will cut it out the same size as this. And then I'll uh, tap and screw holes all the way around and hold the plastic down. Because as it stands, you got this screw and this screw here that are raised above this bar here. And when you put something on, it sort of rocks around a bit. So it's not done yet, but uh, I managed to, you know, repurpose a lot of parts here. Um, I had to add this because basically you're going to have rocking, right? And it, it took care of that. It's solid as a rock now. But. Um, I got a machine bolt going through a uh, triple butted uh, frame here because you got this tube going through it as well. And I basically had to drill a hole through there to keep this from sliding down. It's, it's actually where it's supposed to be now when I put the bracket on it to hold the back end for the, the, um, the, um, the long board. So it's perfect where it is now. I drilled the hole through it, it's not going to move. Um, these brackets or these pieces here aren't finished yet. I still got to notch them out around the tube and everything else. But uh, they were just there to eyeball it so I can get these ones tapped and uh, drilled. It's a lot of work. I spoke two or three hours of work because it's all metal. Drill bits, they don't want to go through metal very well. So they like to skip and everything else. You got to get them just right. But I managed to keep it straight. Which is nice. Uh, the other part I did was the rear disc adapter. Obviously this has no brakes, or it doesn't have any brakes any, anymore. Uh, all it had was the cheap uh, rim brakes, and I removed all the uh, brazons a while ago before I painted it. Uh, this part here I made a couple of years ago, and it's never failed me. Let's get a good idea, a good, uh, good eyeball of that, because it's, it's, it's amazing. If you have a bike, that you want to disc brake on, you can actually make this quite cheaply. You can, you can make it out of steel or milled aluminum. Uh, it's just basically, well, I can measure it out for you. Actually, let me do that for you. Okay, roughly uh, two inch by four inch. And then you just basically notch it out where you want. Obviously, you want to go through the axle. You can either have it on the outside of the frame or the inside if you want to space it that way. Um, you'll have to eyeball where you're going to drill the holes for the brake. You basically, you put the brake up against the plate after it's mounted. And you would basically just uh, spin the wheel when it's on the on stand or whatever. And as long as the disc doesn't hit the top of the brake, you're pretty good. But uh, the uh, pads will grab the disc. And this one's perfect. It's never rubbed or d it gave me over the years it never gave me any sign that it was going to uh, break or or make a lot of noise or anything. It's just perfect. And I've done really hard braking going down the Hamilton Mountain uh, with a full load and it's never never moved. Um, this one obviously I got it on now but I'll take it off and uh, I'm going to buff it out and uh, paint the same color as the frame. Uh, you're going to need this bar here you can pretty much make it a whatever, whatever you want out of. Um, you could even use an old tool if you wanted to, like an old wrench if you had to. But um, 
you'll need to drill a hole through your frame and bolt it to that. That uh, takes the forces because every time you hit the brakes it's going to want to twist and it will break free the uh, nut. So that is really important. Uh, that's really, really, really thin and light aluminum and that's never failed or buckled. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a nice little adapter. Nothing fancy. I mean, you could, you could round off the edges and make it look nicer. But uh, I can't be bothered. You know, if it works, why mess with it? So, uh, the front's going to have a new fork, so I'm not really going to need to make another adapter for it. It'll have a braze on. But, uh, actually, I'll take you upstairs and I'll show you the forks I'm looking to pick up. And I'm going to be modding those. I've also modded this part here for safety. That's where the uh, derailleur would uh, be mounted there. And uh, what I did is I notched out the bracket, and when I put the, the bolt back in for the derailleur, it uh, keeps it from sliding this way, and that's to keep it from popping out. The only way that's going to that's going to come out is if that uh, frame snaps, which I can't see because it's steel. Same with over here. It's not 100% finished yet, but this basically pulls it up, keeps it from wanting to pop out if it comes loose. But it will not come loose. These have never come loose on me yet. Uh, that's about it. I ordered up, uh, went and ordered up hookworms, which I got. This is one small problem. Uh, I went by some idiot on Amazon was arguing with the seller about, oh, they're not 29 inch or 26 inch when it's clearly posted 29 inch. And me being an idiot, I went and went with this idiot that was complaining that they were 26 when it was supposed to be 29 or whatever. So I went and ordered it. And guess what? They're not 26, they're 29. So now I'm stuck with 29 inch freaking tires that I can't use. I have to reorder them. It'll take three months to get here. So I'm just going to use the tires that uh, uh, I got with the bike. I got two good tires, so good enough for now. I'll reorder these in 26 inch and uh, try and find someone to pawn these off on. Maybe sell them to uh, the sports exchange. <coughs> Swappers, sorry, sports swappers. Maybe they want them. They're brand new. <laughs> Give me a few bucks for them. But, uh, yeah, it's coming along. It's actually turning out better than my old one. <laughs> uh, I think it's because I've had more practice this, this time around. Um, like I said, I'm going to leave the back end for last. I want to basically get the front end done, get the controller on the bike, get it wired up, get it on the road so I can test it. And then when I'm happy that everything is set up properly, brakes and everything else, then I'm going to start rebuilding the, uh, the back end. Later, guys.